All right, good morning. This is a Rob Almeida from G Captain. Uh, on our screen today, we have Jamie Tetralt, who is the Director of Marine Product Support for Caterpillar Marine Systems. He's joining us here from Hamburg, Germany. Um, Jamie, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just give us a quick, uh, quick rundown um, as to your background and where you came from, uh, how you ended up with Caterpillar, and and, uh, and what you uh, what you actually what you do for for Caterpillar these days. Okay, Rob. Thank you. Well, just a little bit of the background. Uh, I've always uh, always been very interested in marine. My father actually was a marine engineer. I went to Merchant Marine Academy, Kings Point. And uh, growing up, I was a bit of a motorhead myself. So I had that same interest and passion. So I also attended Kings Point and graduated in 1990. Uh, after that, uh, I joined Wartzilla Diesel and was in their apprentice program for three years and worked in different service roles within Wartzilla and many of the different locations around the world. However, I did want to get a little bit more into the, uh, the American culture, and I joined Caterpillar in 1994 as a design engineer for heavy fuel. One of the goals was to try and incorporate uh, heavy fuel into our 3600 product that we had at the time. Um, evolved through different types of roles, got my master's degree uh, through Caterpillar as well, and eventually uh, spent some time in sales, uh, and I was working with different customers around the world doing marine sales. Uh, but eventually came back to my passion, which is aftermarket business, product support. And three years ago, we decided to reorganize our, our company for the marine side. Rather than being geographic responsibilities, we went with functional responsibilities. At that point in time, I was uh, appointed the director of product support. And ultimately, that job is responsible for all aftermarket business, be it parts, service, or anything associated with that customer quality and satisfaction. Etc. for both the Caterpillar brands and the MNK brands of our marine products. Okay. Um, real quick, one of the questions I had was, uh, what is the difference between, cat, between the CAT brand and the MAK brand? Um, you know, I've seen those both uh, on your website, and I, I just, what, what, really simply, what is, the, what is the difference? Well, we, we did an acquisition of MAK in the late 90s, and ultimately MAK is a medium-speed engine which has historically been very marine focused. It's, uh, it's most popular in the German market, particularly in the container feeders. And at that point in time when we did the acquisition, our concern was that uh, it's a great product, but there's a lot of other applications that we could expand into. And we looked at the MMK acquisition to help us grow our portfolio. Okay. But following the acquisition, we realized that being very German-centric, the, the MMK brand didn't have that global exposure. So MAK is ultimately, a, it's a marine diesel engine, but it also can be used in power generation applications or petroleum applications. It's exclusively medium speed, okay. which means that it's above, excuse me, below 1,000 RPM, which is the definition of medium speed. Okay. Traditionally, our Caterpillar brand engines are high speed, which is above 1,000 RPM. The only engine that, that crosses that threshold for Caterpillar brand is our 3600 or C280 in its modern nomenclature. Uh, it's located in Hamburg, Germany, uh, or excuse me, Kiel, Germany, and our headquarters is in Hamburg, Germany. And that's one of the reasons why we're located in Hamburg is to be close to our MAK business. Okay. But MAK is a well-known brand in the in marine industry. Caterpillar is also a well-known brand in the marine industry, but it, it's two completely different markets and segments. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, you know, so one of the one of the biggest uh, issues going on in, in our industry right now um, is. Uh, is reducing the carbon footprint of uh, of the global shipping industry, and um, I was wondering what you know what is Caterpillar doing these days, technology wise or, or processes? Uh, how how are your processes evolving to conform to new like, IMO regulations or um, you know the new push to re reduce our, our carbon footprint? Well, I think there's there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You can do the carbon footprint reduction just through this manufacturing process in itself, and. And I'm, I'm very proud of what Caterpillar has done in our manufacturing process. We, we've traditionally been very high on the global sustainability um, reports. And, in fact, Caterpillar has one of the largest recycling programs in our, in our uh, manufacturing processes in the world. And if you've ever had a chance to visit our factories, I would encourage any customer to ask their dealer to bring them to a factory. You'd be amazed at how we recycle all the machining equipment, uh, the machining material, the fluids, etc., but in addition to that, uh, our remanufacturing process is the largest in the world for any diesel engine manufacturer. And what we do is, is when a customer has an engine which has parts on it, 
we offer two types of parts that you can utilize to replace that. That would either be a new part or a remanufactured part. And we have a certified remanufactured program where we provide that part, and the cost is typically about half the price of new. So that allows us to significantly reduce the amount of global waste in the carbon footprint. Now, as we move more into the operations side, which would be related to the emissions reductions, uh, Caterpillar has always been on the forefront of meeting these emissions reductions and, and on occasion exceeding them. A great example is we've got IMO uh, 3 coming up. Uh, we have the EPA reduction uh, challenges coming up. And we've already introduced some product which meets the IMO regulations prior to the enforcement date. But ultimately, to meet these technology challenges, it really requires a lot of engineering and a lot of investment. We're very lucky in Caterpillar to have had the experience of the on-road uh, emissions challenges in advance of the marine. So if you can imagine all of these on-road truck emissions challenges, we've got a whole truck organization that had to meet those goals over three years ago. And we did that through a technology on the Caterpillar brand called Assert, which uh, Diesel Progress uh, announced as their, their best technology three years ago. And one of the, one of the uh, unique elements of this technology is it's a c combination of different types of technologies, not just one, in order to achieve the reduction. And we're primarily targeting doing that without after treatment to the extent possible. Because we know that in any type of marine application, after treatment systems are usually the first things to break down. So we want to build all of this technology into the engine after, rather than having to do it outside. When you say about, when you say after treatment, are you talking about like like uh, CO two scrubbers or, or uh, you know stuff that you know, goes in, in on the stacks of, of, a, of a vessel? Is that what you mean, or or what exactly? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. What, what, our our goal is whenever possible with these new emissions tiers to try and do it with on engine technology. Right. We know with the new IMO three coming up. In certain cases, that's going to be very difficult, but ultimately, uh, that's what our engineers are working on right now in order to try and get as much on-engine technology designed into the emissions reduction so that we don't have to burden the owners with all these big uh, components to add on the vessel and maintain. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, offshore Brazil is, uh, is pretty hot these days, and uh, I noticed you guys want a, want a contract to power 16 vessels that are uh, destined for, uh, for the Brazilian oil patch. Uh, what would you say was Caterpillar's biggest selling point in, in closing that deal? That's a good question, Rob, because it, there's a lot of uh, competition out there, particularly in Brazil. I, I've been to Brazil quite a few times myself, and I remember two years ago arriving at the airport, it seemed like all my competition was on the same flight. <laughs> so uh, I, know that, I know that the world is very interested in Brazil, particularly now with the economic downturn in the marine industry. Brazil seems to be the shining light. Mm -hmm. uh, what is our unique selling advantage in Brazil over the competition. I would say that traditionally we, we can break it down to two elements. The first element is always the products. Uh, we're very proud of our products. We're working and we have been working in Brazil locally with uh, local manufacturing to the extent possible, local assembly mm -hmm. in order to add local content. And we know that that was critical in the decision criteria for winning in Brazil. But secondly, and I think most importantly, is our local presence through our Caterpillar dealer network. We have three dealers which are present in Brazil. Each one of those dealers are located in geographic territories, and each one of those dealers has very strong relationships with the local operators and the local shipyards. And to further add to that, we've got a whole petroleum organization which has done very well with Petrobras over the years in terms of building relationships and providing products. So ultimately, like most is presence, uh, mm -hmm. local knowledge, and relationships plays a big role, and we've been in Brazil for long enough to have established that. Definitely. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, service capabilities are a key differentiator in the, in the global marine industry, and uh, how does how does Caterpillar answer the service needs of, of its global customer base? Well, to be honest with you, this is what I've been working on for the past three years as my primary objective. Uh, when I came into the job three years ago, one of the things that we did, first of all, was a voice of customer survey to understand from our different customers, you know, what do you like and not like about Caterpillar product support in general? And, and the general consensus which, which came back was very surprising. It's, to be honest with you, we're not dissatisfied with the service capabilities. We're dissatisfied with the inconsistency of the service capabilities because Marine is a global business our customers travel from territory to territory. And if they're used to getting one level of service in one country or territory and they go somewhere else and it's a different level of service, then they're very unsatisfied. So we put in place a process called a service assessment 
wherein we go to each one of our dealers using a metrics-based process and quantify and qualify their service capabilities. And we've been doing that now for two years, and that's had some very impressive results because we're, for the first time, really allowing our distribution network to set goals and targets based upon these metrics. And surprisingly enough, that wasn't done before. Most recently, and, and you'll likely be seeing some press releases on this in the next few days, we've signed a contract with Germanisha Lloyd wherein we're actually now going to certify these service capabilities of each one of our dealers. So GL is going to be working in conjunction with the dealers to issue a service capabilities uh, certificate, kind of like ISO 9001, so that whenever a customer uh, makes contact with any Caterpillar dealer, there'll actually be a certification of their capabilities, uh, depending upon the different standard levels that we've set. To respond and, and to, to respond to, to whatever issues that, that, that they have, you mean a, a, standard, a standardization of, of service for, for our industry? Exactly. And, and you know, if, if you look at the historical element of the aftermarket business, one of the biggest challenges that our customers have is when you go from one territory to another, you don't know what you're getting into and you don't know what to expect. Right. And one of our goals is to provide more global consistency to them and maybe even more global clarity. I have to say that there are some areas of the world where we're not going to have the same level of capabilities as other areas, but at least we want the customers to know what they're getting into. And depending upon the difficulty in resolving their issue, we might need to have a higher capability dealer attend the vessel rather than a lower capability dealer. So we're working on that process to make sure that the customers understand what they're getting into, they have an expectation of Caterpillar, and we deliver on that expectation. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Um, well, I guess the final question I had today was uh, you know, very much a non-Caterpillar related question, but uh, in, in recent news, uh, the superintendent of your alma mater uh, was uh, resigned the other day, and uh, or perhaps was forced to resign. And I was wondering what your take was uh, on the situation over there at Kings Point. If you have uh, if you have an opinion or you know any any insight as to what's going on over there. Well, you know it's, it's difficult to speak without uh, too much inside information, which I don't have. Of right. course, I just have an opinion. I'm the uh, the vice president of the uh, Germany chapter of the Alumni Association of the Merchant Marine Academy. And we, we do talk about these things amongst ourselves. There's been some recent communications, particularly in the area of about how the funding is, is, uh, is uh, processed and, and when we make our donations, where is that funding going? And I know that the Department of Transportation has made some changes with regards to how that's done. And, of course, that caused some concern. I do know that uh, two years of a superintendent is, is ex extraordinarily short, mm -hmm. and it will cause some turmoil amongst the cadets because... It is nice to have that stability as a student there, and you really do appreciate your superintendent. He sets goals and strategies for the school, and in order for the school to be able to achieve those over time, you need that tenure right. to be able to deliver on that. So my primary concern is not necessarily about the individual himself, but about how is the academy going to continue to function in this very competitive market where the U.S. government continues to cut back on funding, yep. yet still need these graduate merchant mariners uh, with licenses to be able to go out there and man our ships and ultimately protect our nation. Right. And this is now a clean sheet of paper, a start over. And I'm really hoping that the Academy will accelerate these initiatives and get back on track again soon. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, great. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate your, t appreciate your time. Um, uh, that concludes the interview for today, unless you have any questions for me. Um, but uh, I really appreciate you, you joining us today. And, uh, no, not at all. I really appreciate your, your publication, your online publication. I read it every day. It's one of my favorites. So congratulations on so quickly becoming so successful in the market. Oh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon, Jamie. Thanks. Thanks. See you.